part one of the 67 Mustang Coupe to Fastback Conversion. In today's video, we are going to show you how we got from this to this. So before we begin to do anything on the car, we need to reinforce the firewall and uh, dashboard, which is what you see me doing here. Um, we're putting in metal supports to support the firewall front to back. The supports will go off the dashboard and go to the back rear frame area of the floor. And that's where you see me weld in here. That will support the firewall once everything is cut away, including the roof and the quarter panels. And that'll help keep the body from flexing, the floor from flexing. Just a couple things to point out that you don't see in the video. The car is on jack stands. The car was leveled before any of this started. So there's uh, scissor jacks on the front frame rails where the motor is. There's jack stands under the middle of the car and there's jack stands towards the rear of the car. Before we begin any of the process, you want to make sure that the body, well, the floor and the frame and everything is level. And that way when you put everything back together, um, your gaps and everything will go back together the way it should and the car will sit straight. So the vertical bar that you see me putting in here, this is going to go from the floor up to the windshield frame. It's going to be welded to the floor and it's going to be welded to that cross section that I have welded in, but it's not going to be welded to the windshield frame. I have it fitting snug into the pocket of the frame where the weather strip goes around. And that's going to be a guide for me when I put the sides back on the car. I'll be able to use that on both sides for a vertical reference um, for the way that the side of the, the car frame is going to sit. Okay, the bar that I'm putting in now, this bar is going to be welded to the frame that I made and then to the floor. This is just going to keep everything from moving from side to side. So now everything is secured front to back, side to side. Now that the bracing is in, it's time to start cutting the car apart. Robbie and I are both using sawzalls at this point um, to start cutting the roof off. So I just want to explain a couple of the other tools that we're using. We're using the sawzalls that you see here. We're going to use an air impact chisel. We're going to use a plasma cutter. We're going to use spot weld cutters, which are small drill bits to drill out the um, spot welds. So now we're turning our attention to the quarter panels and we're going to take the outer quarter panels out first, these quarter panel skins, and we're going to take everything apart in layers. So what I mean by that is we're going to take the exterior quarter panels off, then we'll start taking the inner structure off in small sections.
So the car has a new wiring harness in it. The wires from the front to the rear tail section were tangled up inside the quarter panel. So now I'm just untangling those wires and wrapping them up and getting them out of the way so they don't get damaged. Now we're on to the passenger side quarter panel using the same procedure as the driver side. Now that the quarter panels are removed, we're coming up with a plan to remove the inner wheelhouses and inner structure. While the guys were figuring out their game plan, I took some pictures of the car because I thought it was pretty cool to see the skeleton of the car because that's not something you see every day. So now we've made the decision, we're gonna to try to remove the inner wheelhouses as one unit. And I'm now I'm using the plasma cutter to start cutting it at floor level. Robbie's now using the sawzall and he's cutting out the inner structure where the rear quarter window would be. Now that we got the wheelhouses removed, it's time to turn our attention to the outer rocker panel, and that's what you see me using the plasma cutter here. Um, first I'll cut it straight down from the top, and then I'll cut it up from the bottom. And you got to be careful and make sure that you cut it straight up and down so you don't cut into the inner rocker panel.
Now that the rocker panel is removed, I'm turning my attention to the front tow board area where the door bolts to the car. This section needs to be removed as well as the entire tow board area. This process here takes uh, quite a long time and uh, there's a lot of spot welds to cut and separate so we don't do any damage to the firewall, the cowl, or the rocker panel. Now using the plasma cutter only separates the outer rocker panel from the inner rocker panel. It leaves the two parts that are still spot welded together. So that's what you see me using here. I'm using an air hammer to separate the and cut these spot welds and remove that thin layer of metal that's the last remaining metal from the rocker panel. For the upper section where I'm going to separate the two pieces of metal, I'm actually grinding right over top of the spot welds. That makes the metal a little bit thinner, so it's easier to use the air chisel to separate those pieces of metal. Now that the rocker panel has been removed, I'm turning my attention to the tow board area. I need to separate the tow board from the front firewall, from the top cowl, and from the rocker panel. This section has a tremendous amount of spot welds and there's different layers of metal. So it's, it's a time consuming process in this area and you want to take your time to not damage the underlying metal that we need to weld back onto. Now in this section you can see I, I've drilled out some of the, whole, the spot welds and then I've also ground them down with the grinder and that makes it a lot easier to use the air hammer to separate the two pieces of metal and that's what I'm doing here. This car had a brand new upper and lower cowl put on the car previous to this work that we're doing now. 
So what I'm doing is I'm grinding back the filler and the sealer that was put on there to expose the spot welds that they used to mount those pieces together. Once I expose those spot welds, then I'm going to drill those spot welds out and separate the bottom piece of the uh, toe board. Now that all the metal has been removed from the cowl, from the firewall, and from the rocker panel, there's some dents and there's some areas of the inner rocker panel that were bent um, from us taking it apart. And there was also that dent that we showed in a previous video that I'm using a hammer and dolly to straighten that out. Now that I've got the inner rocker panel straight, to a point where I'm happy with it. I'm dressing some of the welds and some of the high spots that are still left behind. So I'm grinding those down to make everything flush to line up with the new rocker panel that's gonna go on to the car.
one of the last things you saw me do on the video, and I want to explain what we're doing, is this intersection right here, which is going to be part of the frame, and we'll show that to you here in a second. I had to open this up so that inner dog leg could go in here and be welded in. So let me show you what I'm talking about and why we had to cut this. So this is the structure that we're going to put on the car. And this is that inner dog leg that I was talking about. To me, this is a structural part of the car because it's a unibody car. We could, take an, we could have taken the easy rat out and just cut this off and welded it on. But I wanted to open that up so this is on there for the structure. And then this is all the, the metal that's going to go on. And I wanted to show you how we prepped everything for this piece, for here, and for the rocker panel to go on the car. So now we're going to go back over there and I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. So basically all of that toe and kick panel is going to go into this area here. This is the bottom of the cowl, the firewall, and then here's the lower rocker. So all of that's going to go in place. I wanted to get all of this as smooth and take it apart as carefully as possible so we didn't damage it. This was from a previous repair. We're going to fix that before everything goes on. The spot welds were ground down to keep everything smooth. It's going to get a little bit more hammer and dolly work on it. I'm going to hit everything with a wire wheel. I'm going to prime this inner rocker panel with a 2K primer as well as the back side of the outer rocker panel just to keep it from ever rusting in the future. All right, so that's, that's it for this video, guys. I really appreciate you watching and checking it out. If you like it, give it us a thumbs up. And Stay tuned for part two of the conversion.